All right, let's go ahead and get our super mega challenge mode going here. So I'm sure that somebody has probably, somebody has to have done this already, right? And put it up on YouTube. But if not, I guess I'm the first one to do it, though I highly doubt that. So I'm going to go through step by step and explain exactly how I did this. Now, I'll tell you right now, this is more than likely not the most optimal way to do it. I believe I completed this run in an hour and 42 minutes with all the stipulations I put on myself, okay? which I don't think is too bad. I think it's actually pretty good, but we'll it can it definitely out. be improved. I'm not going to be the one to do it, but it can definitely be improved. So as you come through here and deal with your first zombie, you can easily just run right past him while he's in his animation to get up. And once you grab your key, just patiently wait for a second and he'll stroll on by. Now he doesn't always do that. Sometimes he'll come right down uh, that little hall for you. If he does that, pop him in the legs to stun him and then just run right past him real quick. Leg stuns are a really, really, really big deal in this. Now, I want to emphasize this is not intended to be a speed run. So I'm not going to be playing it like a speed runner. I got to be smart here and I got to conserve everything that I can and just be safe because this is this is a little challenging. So while Claire's going to be running through the street here in a second, I might as well go ahead and sum up a few things for you. It's not enough to just memorize the whole game. You really have to not only have the whole game memorized, but completely memorize exactly what items to pick up and what items to use at the correct times. And without that item box, it, that's what makes this really, really, really challenging. But really, once you understand how to do everything, it starts. It gets dramatically easier. So if you ever want to try this, my recommendation would just be to practice this on hardcore and save very consistently and create new save files for every save. That way, if there's a point you're struggling at, just reload that checkpoint and just keep rolling with it. All right, first things first, once we get inside the police department, we're going to head straight to the right and head under here. And another thing that I must emphasize is that you need to literally plan the entire game out from beginning to end in your head before you even attempt to try this. It should be at the point where everything almost feels like muscle memory, where the game just looks like a program and you don't even see it as a game anymore. So we're going to go ahead and dip into the conference room, because we've got 10 rounds right there we'll go ahead and pick up. And we're going to be stuck with this handgun for the entire game, obviously, because we can't use the item box, and you can't drop key items unless you've used them up, and you can't drop weapons. And obviously, with a very limited inventory space on Hardcore, your weapon options are very limited as well. So we will not be getting Claire's second handgun because it takes up entirely too much space. That one slot is actually a big deal. Now, I'm fairly certain with this zombie right here that's going to come through the door, when he busts through it, I think there's just enough frames in there in his animation for you to sneak right by him, but I don't like to risk it. I just hide back here, and once he starts climbing over, I run. All the enemies in this game, none of them are particularly smart, but they're all incredibly dangerous, so you, you need to respect every enemy in the game. Now, with these zombies, just go for the body shots, because it doesn't matter. They're very weak. It can take anywhere from four to two shots. If you get lucky, you can take one out with two and the other one out with three, but I didn't get lucky there. No two zombies are created equally. They all have pretty different health pools. Now, I always make sure I take this guy out, and unfortunately, I missed one of those shots, but that's okay. We'll drop him with that one, head straight in here, and there's two reasons I want to make sure I deal with him. One, I wanted those boards and the ammo, more specifically the boards. I'm going to pop him to make sure he doesn't grab me as I run by. And the primary reason I go out of my way to kill him is because the very first time I played this game, when I left the East office, he ambushed me and instantly bit me. So I'm, I've never made that same mistake twice. So I always make sure he's gone because one way or another, you're going to have to deal with him. So it might as well be on your, on your terms instead of his. All right, now there's some ammo on the bench right there on the left. And as we head through here, there's actually a couple of small things to explain because we will come back through this hallway again and it'll be pretty rowdy the next time. Now you see an, a window that's not boarded up right there. That will be broken and a zombie will be coming through on our next run through here. And you'll see another broken window on the left. There will be a zombie coming through there and there will also be one waiting for you. And then you have this window here, which is the one that we're gonna board up. By boarding this one up, it ensures that there's not going to be more zombies waiting down there. So really, there's only one that we'll be forced to deal with when we go back down there. Now, once we get up here, you instantly just want to turn around because there's going to be some ammo right behind you. 
No, your other around. There you go. Now, four minutes and 31 seconds. That's all right. That's not too bad. Now, most speedrunners, I don't really watch a lot of speedruns of this game. Uh, but I would assume that they probably just go out of their way to try to avoid the zombies instead of putting them down permanently. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to make sure that they are 100% down because they will cause you huge problems later if you don't. At least the way that I play it. So once we deal with that guy, we can run in here and grab the gunpowder. And there's going to be some ammo in here. And then we're going to go ahead and get clear speed loader, which is for some reason in Leon's desk. Doesn't make a lot of sense, but whatever. Video game. Your combination is going to be NED for the left and MRG for the right. Okay, now Claire's reload speed isn't god-awful. Now, I always aim for the head because that, <laughs> that might happen. That, as far as I know, being able to pop their head is completely based on RNG. I don't think that there is anything that you can do to control that, so it's blind luck. Which is exactly why I aim for them, because if you get them, you can serve a lot of time and ammo. But if you don't, you didn't really lose anything. Now, as you come out of the west office, this zombie's going to get up, and wow, that was really lucky. So I got two of those beautiful head pops in a row. And I think out of all the times I've played this game, I got more in this playthrough than I ever have before. Now, you grab the boards right outside the dark room, board that window up. There you go, no more zombies getting in. Instantly come into the dark room, grab yourself some gunpowder, combine that. Now we got 35 rounds in total. Now we're going to head up to the second floor. There are two zombies up here, but only one of them is an immediate threat. And he instantly dropped down the stairs. And good lord, look at that. Really lucky again. So the zombie that actually did spot us, he just fell over uh, the staircase and he's now down on the first floor. So you got to keep that in mind. Locker room is cap for the code, and that'll open you up uh, incendiary shells, sorry, for the grenade launcher. And obviously didn't pick them up. We're not going to need them for quite a while, but we will wind up getting the grenade launcher eventually. So let's go ahead and deal with this little prick. I'll say, dude, aim, come on. There we go. What the hell is up with you? I do not remember him having this much health, though. There we go. Like I said, not all zombies are created equally. The more that you play the game, the more you'll start to see what their health pools are. So now we can go ahead and head through here now that we have the portable safe. And the portable safes, every single time you play, they're going to be randomized. It's never going to be the same thing twice. Well, I suppose in theory it could be the same thing twice. But I'm probably going to spend the next several minutes fiddling around with this, so go ahead and smoke them if you got them, kids. You know, I never watch my own footage back usually, and this is embarrassing. <laughs> There you go. Good lord, that is embarrassing. Okay, well, once you've got it cracked open, go ahead and put in three combinations. You want 102, which will give you your gunpowder. You want 109, which is going to give you some handgun ammunition. And then you want to open 208 up because there's grenade rounds in there for your grenade launcher. But do not touch those yet. I know it's tempting, but don't touch them. We'll come back for them later. Go ahead and grab our stuff, and then we're headed straight up to the third floor.
Now the reason I'm taking out all these zombies should be pretty obvious because when Mr. X shows up later, these zombies suddenly become a huge, huge, huge problem. It's better to take them out when you're able to pace the game however you want to than when Mr. X is forcing you to do so. That's really what makes Mr. X a threat. He himself is really not that big of a deal because you can outrun him. But it's more of what he represents, which is forcing you into situations you really do not want to be in. So DCM is your third forward locker code. Inside there are machine gun rounds. Obviously, you don't want to touch those yet. We grab our spade key. And get a cameo from our friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. As you come through here, you're going to have gunpowder. You can go ahead and combine that with the stuff you just picked up in the locker room. Grab those boards. And then you want to cut to the right, and there's some more handgun ammo for you. And then we'll head into the library, talk to Martin. And then we've got a few zombies to deal with. Can you get back here? Why was that? I've got something to show you. It's important. All right, I'm on my way. Now, there's only one zombie that's an immediate threat. I looked to my right and noticed that she wasn't there, so I'm going to ignore it for now. Go ahead and grab the gunpowder, and we'll grab the unicorn metal, which is a fish, a scorpion, and a vase. Or a vase if you're pretentious. Okay, unicorn metal. All right. Now as we come through here, there's a knife on the ground. Don't touch it yet, but we are going to need it later. So here's the first zombie that is an immediate threat. And if you could aim, you'd probably be able to kill her. There you go. Wow, another head pop. Alright, this guy has a quite a bit of health. Ooh, that's a bad spot to be in. Get out of there. There we go. And wow, another head pop. Can Claire get lucky again? The now these are the only three zombies in here, but unfortunately that last one has quite a bit of health. Fortunately we popped the head, so not a huge deal, but this guy also has a hell of a lot of health too. Shit. And don't be afraid about using the ammo. There's more... Th oh my god, another one. There's way more ammo in hardcore than I think people realize. There's tons and tons and tons of it. So don't worry about using it up. Burn through it. Kill everything. So we're going to go ahead and move the bookshelves into place now so we don't have to worry about it later. So when we get the rod for the jack, then we can go ahead and just instantly move them one time and then we'll be able to create our bridge and get out. So we got the red book. And now open up the spade door, hang a right. You'll find some ammo down there. And then as you turn around, you're going to head to the lion statue, punch in the combination for that, and then you'll have your second medallion. And the code for this is a lion, a leaf, and the eagle. Alright, now we'll head downstairs and talk to Marvin. That is a very full inventory, but we're about to clean it up really quick here. First things first, do an about face and go ahead and unlock the west office with your spade key, then turn around and go ahead and put both of those medallions at the goddess statue. So Elliot was right. Yeah. Alright, now that we got that, we're going to head up through, I think it's called the reception area. Can't quite remember. Now the reception area is downstairs, but we're going to be heading towards the art room next, because we need to get rid of the red book. So there is a safe in this room, but we're not going to be touching it because it gives us the extended magazine for Claire's second pistol, which we won't be getting, so there's no point in touching it. And once we unlock that, we can get rid of the spade key. And we also got rid of the key that we got at the gas station, so that freed up quite a bit of space. We'll go ahead and grab the weapons locker key card. And then we'll combine the hand with the book. And then, of course, put it on the statue. And we are not, I repeat, not going to take the scepter. Leave it there. I know it's tempting, but leave it there. Alright, now we're going to continue on to where the helicopter crashes in the building, and we run into Leon. Alright. Once Claire is done flirting with Leon, we'll go ahead and grab this second set of boards. 
We'll nab the ammo here. Good lord, that is a lot of ammo at this point. And a lot of the reason why is because I'm getting lucky with those headshots. That's why I aim for them. You never know what's going to happen. All right, we'll go ahead and crack this open. There's going to be a zombie instantly coming in from the window that's going to be on our left. So I like to come around and put five rounds into his head before he even gets in. Wear him down. Now I like to just kind of step right outside the door here because this zombie has actually caught me a couple times. So I like the ability to be able to escape if I need to. I would also like it if I would actually hit him. There we go, dropped him. Go ahead and do a quick test with the knife. Yep, he's out. You really want to conserve your knife. You absolutely want that because you're going to need it for the uh, first boss, G Stage 1. Now you want to be careful coming in here because you never know if there's... if there. Well, there's always going to be a zombie here, but you never know if he's just going to whip right around the corner and, and bite you. I've had that happen to me before, so be careful coming in. Lock him out, and then we'll deal with this guy. Okay, we grabbed our fuse. Make sure he's down. Yep, I think that'll do. Grab this gunpowder here and combine it with the stuff we got up in the library. There we go. 60 rounds, not bad. Now you're going to want to dip into the office here and grab the round handle. And head out. And then we're going to be heading through the reception area. And let's see, yeah, this is the door exactly right there. That is exactly why I make absolutely sure that I killed that zombie that we run into at the very beginning. That guy right there. Because he has just instantly attacked me when I ran through there before. All right, so through the reception area, and this is what I was talking about earlier with the how I specifically boarded up one of those windows. We're at 16 minutes and 2 seconds right now. Not too bad. Now you come through here. You're going to have a zombie coming in straight through this window. He's not a problem, though. Don't worry about him. Just keep moving. Now there is going to be a zombie right around this corner. Go for the leg shots and run. There's the stun, and we're out. Sometimes that can take up to four rounds. Uh, I've done it in one, but we got it in two, so that's pretty good. And having that boarded up ensures that there's not going to be any more zombies here. We can sprint right through. We're good to go. Now I went ahead and equipped my flashbang, because just in case I get grabbed, I do not want to use the knife. Just grabbed another flashbang. And we're going to dip into the weapons locker room. I guess it would be the safety deposit room. And we're going to use the key card, but not pick up the grenade launcher. You don't need it yet. Very tempting, I know. Trust me, I know. I used to, actually, when I when I tried this quite a while ago, I used to grab it, and I realized over time that it was probably better just to leave it, because you really don't need it that much for quite a while. Now we're going to head straight back up to the second floor. We're going to use the round handle, and then we're headed to the star's office. Now another note with this is that you really, really want to conserve those flashbangs. You can afford to waste up to two of them, but you want to try to conserve them all. Alright, so there's going to be a liquor on the ceiling. He won't bother you as long as you sprint through and immediately get to the star's office. He's too busy munching on that zombie. So you grab your battery and combine it with the detonator. Now there is one more flashbang in here that we're going to grab. And of course, we're going to slow down and just patiently walk through here. He's going to be on the left wall as we come around the corner. So you, as long as you stick to the right, you can easily get around him. Now this is going to take us back into the library, then we're going to head upstairs to the third floor. Now once you get up here, there's actually two little tricks. One of them is a bit hard to pull off though. At least it, it's kind of inconsistent for me, but I think it's just because I'm being inconsistent. So once you put the detonator on the C4, immediately run around here and head out the door to the library. The explosion is actually what knocks the bookcase that's right next to that door in front of the door and blocks you from getting out. But if you go outside, then that won't happen because video game. So we put on our code here, which is a woman's head. I guess it would be the goddess, the bow and arrow, and the serpent. It's going to be noises, but it's nothing. It's just the game trying to freak you out. Now here's where it gets tricky. You need your flashbang for this. Liquor comes down. You have to throw it behind him and get it around that corner. 
because it stuns him and it stuns the zombie that drops down. If you do not get that zombie stun, he is going to grab you. There's no way around him without dealing with him. So you're either going to have to use another flash or you're going to have to take the risk of shooting his legs to stun him and then the liquor is going to have time to react and come and get you. So you really, really, really want to make sure you get that right. Now I went ahead and equipped my knife. We're heading down to the goddess statue to put the last medallion in and then we're on our way to our first boss fight. And for some reason I'm going a long way. I have no idea why. I must have gotten confused. Which is not surprising to anybody. Now here's why the knives are so important for this first fight with G. The damage of the knife is tethered directly to the frame rate of the game. So the higher your frame rate, the more damage your knife is going to do. This is why this fight is a bit harder for console players than it is for PC players. Because on PC, of course, you can unlock the frame rate and put it pretty much wherever you want. Uh, with the graphic settings I have on right now, it's usually hovering between about 70 and 90. But during this fight, it usually drops down to high 50s to mid 60s. So it's still roughly in the 60 frames range. Now, I could go into my graphics settings and dramatically lower all the graphics and boost the frame rate, but that just feels kind of like cheating to me. But I wind up having to do this a bit different from some people. So you instantly just get in there and start cutting them apart with a knife. And we've got two of them and we will be using both here. It takes him a while before he actually attacks you. His first attack has pretty much, in my experience, always been him grabbing you. There's the grab. And then you use the remainder of that night to get him off. And then you go back in with the second one. Now, I actually do not finish him off with this knife. You get the stun here. He drops down. I keep slashing at him. And then I run. The reason why I do this is because I'm not sure if it's my frame rate or if I just suck at this. But it is very rare that I'm actually able to just fully kill him with both knives. And he usually winds up getting a hit on me. So, to me, it's just a hell of a lot safer to take a little bit of extra time here and just take him out with the handgun after I've done all that damage with the knife, because that was actually a lot more damage than you might think if you're not too familiar with this game. Like I said, I'm not going for the speed run. It is a quick run, but it's, I'm not trying to get this in under an hour or anything. Well, he got another grab on me, but it's all right. I had to get rid of that knife anyways for later, so I was actually kind of glad that I got to use it on him here. I just dropped him again and get a few more shots in. He's got to be almost dead at this point. Yep, there he is. Twenty-one minutes, fifty-four seconds. Not too bad. You could obviously get get to this point in under twenty minutes easily, but I'm kind of taking my time a little bit and making sure I kill everything I run into. Obviously, with the exception of the of the liquors. Now, there's plenty of ammo down here for you to grab. I have never had this much ammo at this point, and the reason why is because I was getting so lucky with those headshots, which this does kind of create a little bit of a problem. It's not really that much of a problem, but I can't infinitely carry all of those rounds because I'm going to have to get rid of them to make space in my inventory. But that's perfectly fine because I would much rather have something and not need it and drop it than need it and not have it. Now, there's some more gunpowder there. I'll combine those. And, oh yeah, look at that, 86 rounds, how the fuck about that, huh? It won't move! You got it! So, what's your mom like? She works at Umbrella. She's making an important new medicine. Umbrella? That big pharmaceutical company? Hopefully you'll get to see her again soon. So, where is your dad? He, um, worked with my mom, but oh. he's gone. Wow. Both of my... Over there! It's closed. All right, we got our cutscenes out of the way. This part is pretty easy. Uh, you don't need to fire a single round or anything here. The only thing you'll need is one flashbang and you'll be golden. So you come in here, instantly hook down to the right, and head towards where the kennel is. There's going to be two liquors in there waiting for you, but you can easily just sneak past them. 
One's going to be right in the center, so we just keep to the left, and it should be good. Then there's another one on the ceiling right up here, but if you just stick to the right, again, you'll be good. I will say this though, never test a liquor's patience. No matter how fast you think you are, you are not faster than them. All right, now the very last bit here is a flashbang. Go ahead and grab that, you're gonna need it. So we got three, good. Then we'll go ahead and get our diamond key from right here. Well, it might help if you open the whole thing up, dummy. There you go. All right, both these zombies are instantly going to get up the second I grab it. So as long as you just quick and you run, you're fine. You can easily get past both of them. Now, this part can be a little tricky. Pull out the flashbang, and when that liquor turns around, throw that thing and you go. And that's unfortunate. Now, here's something that's odd. That does do damage to you, even though it doesn't appear so. Those slashes from liquors when they're stunned by the flashbang doesn't really do a whole lot. But this is exactly why this is not called a no damage run, because that technically counts as damage, even though it doesn't look like it affected me. But the next time I bring up my inventory, you'll see that the... I, I'm still in the fine state, but it's, uh, it's actually a little yellow now. It's not completely green. So that's damage. doesn't count as a no damage run. But it is still a no healing run. So I'm coming in to the firing range. There is absolutely nothing in here I need, but I have to use this key here. The reason why is that there's only, there's only three doors that Claire uh, has to use that key on. But if you miss one, you are permanently stuck with that key because you can't use the item box. So even if you don't want to go into a room, you have to use it all up. Otherwise, you're stuck with it. But all right, that wasn't too bad. Now that part is, you can definitely get through that without taking a hit from the liquor. I usually do. I'm not sure what I did wrong there, but it is 100% possible to do it. Now there's the stock for the grenade launcher and we're leaving it. Don't touch it. I've seen some people say you absolutely have to have it. No, you do not. I will prove it. All right, once we got that cracked open, we can head up here, and I did grab the white gunpowder in there because this is the point in time where we're going to start beefing up our machine gun ammo. Believe it or not, yes, I do use the machine gun on this run. It's a very underrated weapon, and this is where we're going to start uh, getting incendiary rounds for the grenade launcher. So it's time to stock up. Now, as we come in here, there's going to be some machine gun ammo right here, and then we'll head through the door on the right. We'll go grab our heart key, and we'll come back. Okay, once you're out of the chief's office, you want to head directly upstairs. And there's going to be some wooden boards, a flashbang, and of course some more ammo for you, as if we need more. I actually have way more than I'm going to need for the rest of the entire game. Come on, grab it, Claire. There you go. Now, there's two zombies in here that we need to take out, as well as some incendiary rounds. Grab those, and our first zombie's right around the corner. Yeah, he's definitely going to get back up. Come on, go down, dude. Ah, oh, yeah, I think that'll do. Now, the other one's also going to be right around the corner. Where is he? There he is. Now, if I had not used both knives on G, this would be the place that I would use it up. Like, drop that zombie and then slash him to death with the knife, and then I would drop the knife. Either way, you are going to have to get rid of that knife. Which is why I said I was glad that I used it on G. Okay, now we'll unlock this door. Behind that door is one of the parts we need to get out of here. I'll double check these guys. Yep, there we go. And we will wind up coming back for that part later, but I'm not going to grab it now. We're going to head straight back downstairs and down to the bottom floor and head over to the interrogation room. And the reason I grabbed those boards is because there's a zombie at a window down here and I want to keep him from getting in.
There we go. Okay, now before you head into the interrogation room, you want to hang a left because this locker has some more white gunpowder for you. You can combine those and stack that with your other machine gun ammo. Now you got two free slots and 135 uh, machine gun rounds, so not too bad. More handgun rounds, and we'll grab the bejeweled box here. And then, there he is. As long as you're quick, that liquor can't get you. Just make sure you go on the far side of the table and you're good to go. Now we're gonna head all the way back up to the third floor and we're gonna exit through the balcony out to where the helicopter is. I think everybody should probably know what's about to happen here. Now, as we make our way down here, there's going to be two zombies. And, of course, I always make sure I take them out as well. These two, you can really kind of get away with not taking out, but I just do it more out of habit than anything else. I'm a bit of a coward, and I like to play things as safely as possible when I'm doing this. And that was really dangerous what I did. I had my back to that zombie for way too long. And that is really dangerous. Don't... Yeah, I wouldn't recommend doing that. Look at how quick he, he caught up. Zombies, they can move astonishingly fast. Oh, okay, well that fixes that problem. Good lord, I am getting so lucky with these headshots, man. I tell you. Now, I'm actually going to discard those other five rounds. So, we're still good. we still got 65 rounds. But we got to start freeing up a little bit of space, and I'm barely going to use the, the 9mm ammo anymore. Once I get to the sewers, I literally never touch 9mm ammo again. All right, I think everybody knows what's about to happen here, huh? Yep. There he is, the Lord of Resident Evil memes. Jesus, stay back. Now, there's a couple tricks that you can actually do with Mr. X. You can use his very long recovery times against him. So what I like to do here is draw him as far away from that door as I can, and I cut it close, wait till he swings, and then I just go. The reason why is because he has a very, very long recovery time after he swings. So it gives me a, quite a bit of time to get away and to completely lose him because we have to go right back to the art room, which is right around the corner, to grab the scepter so we can get the ruby out of it, combine it with a bejewel box, and then of course we get the stars badge out of it. This is one of the reasons that this is one of the best games I've played in a long time because when it comes down to actual design, this is one of the best design games I've played in so long. Um, Every, every single placement of every item and every room was meticulously done. It's, there's a reason it took them almost four years to make this game. Brilliant level design. And it's the only reason, well, I wouldn't say the only reason, but I think it's one of the primary reasons that the Resident Evil community um, and really the speedrunning community have such longevity with this series because so many of these games are just brilliantly designed. Not all of them, of course. Like five and six are not really that great. Six is actually genuinely bad. But I actually waited there for a second and listened to where Mr. X is at, because sometimes he'll go in that room with you, and then you'll need to use a flashbang to get past him. I got lucky, and he didn't. Mr. X can always be a problem. No matter how good you get at this game, no matter how well you know it, Mr. X can always be an issue. Because uh, his AI is mostly completely unscripted. So a little bit of RNG on your side, though can certainly uh, make things go a little bit quicker. 32 minutes, 45 seconds, that's not half bad. So we're gonna go ahead and use the STARS badge. We're heading straight back to the STARS office here. Actually, before we do that, yeah, we need to hit the linen room, and this is the last of the diamond key. So get in here, and the thing that we need is the portable safe, and we'll get rid of this. Now we're gonna head to the STARS office and drop off the, ooh, Got to be patient. Got to be careful here. I'm pretty sure he's coming in behind me, but as long as I can get around the corner and he doesn't instantly see me, I should be able to get to the star's office. Yep, he's in here. It's okay. He cannot get into the star's office, which is a good thing. Uh, he also cannot get into the clock tower, so keep that in mind. So we found some more incendiary shells. And we're going to go ahead and just drop this off, but we're not going to grab the machine gun. We won't be coming back for that for quite some time. But there it is. It's open and ready for us. Now that freed up another inventory slot. 
got to be patient with Mr. X. It's better to just wait, give it a few seconds, see where he's going to go, and listen for him than it is to try to rush, especially with a liquor right outside that door. Now, here's the thing. I don't want to go through the stairs kind of towards where the west office is. I actually want to go back out to the main hall, which is why I was really waiting for him to get as far away from me as possible. But I think he might be around here, so you'll notice that I'm pretty careful as I go through these doors, and I'm not running at all. Okay, well, it definitely looks like we're clear in here. So we're going to head back down through the main hall and into the west office and into the safety deposit room in order to get the uh, grenade launcher. And you'll see why here in a second I decided to go ahead and go the long way around instead of heading straight down the staircase. I'm still a little nervous as to where he is. I, do vivid I just got done doing this so I vividly remember uh, exactly what I was thinking at the time. The reason why is because right outside this door there's a liquor. If you go the long way around, he is going to cut you off and you're going to have to turn around regardless. If you go this way, you will, act, you will very easily be able to get in. You can go ahead and get this knocked out real quick, and I believe this one was actually pretty easy. And then you can go ahead and get your ever-so-beautiful grenade launcher. Okay, well, that was easy, and I still took too long to do it. I'm not going to cut any of this out, but I will make sure I put subtitles in there so you know where to skip to if you don't feel like watching me fumble around with that. Now, finally, we can open up two or three. Two more item slot pouches. And there we go. We got another two incendiary rounds. Another two here. And there you are, you big, beautiful bastard. All right, the first thing we're going to do is that we're going to kill this fucking liquor that's right outside the door. Because he is a big problem, especially with Mr. X lurking around. There's one. Now, one big thing I listen for here is Mr. X's music and his footsteps. It's always going to take two to kill one. So now I'm going to wait right here because I guarantee that Mr. X is going to be coming over here. Because that was very loud. Noise absolutely will attract him. Uh-huh. Yep, there he is. Now, I'm sure that people are probably starting to understand exactly why I was going out of my way to remove everything I could, because it makes Mr. X basically not a problem anymore. All right, we need to get around him. And once we get out here, we're going to immediately hang a right. We actually want him to be following us right now. This is a good thing. We cut to the right, hang a left, and there's our final heart door. Heart door? Use your words, man. Heart door. There we go. And then we're going to grab the jack. Come around and we'll grab this grenade, and we're about to use this here pretty soon. Go ahead and equip it, wait for him to get in here, and then we'll be able to lose him. The reason I definitely wanted him here in this area is because now I, I know for a fact I can lose him. He's, generally speaking, it's usually a scripted sequence where he's going to show up there regardless, but I've actually had it a few times where he doesn't do that. So guaranteeing that he's in the area makes this a lot easier. So as we come up to the second floor, we are going to be coming up on that other liquor, but I'm not going to kill it. I'm going to leave that one alone. I actually do not believe I killed that one at all. Okay, we're going to grab the incendiary rounds that we uh, left here from earlier. And we're going to find our Mr. Liquor friend here. And there's some more incendiary shells. We're about to use that one grenade, as I said before, and we're about to use one uh, incendiary shell coming up here pretty soon. 
the predominant reasons why is because I need to very qu quickly clear out two zombies and I also need to free up inventory space. And this is what it's all about. It's about managing it's about managing the inventory as well as working within your means. And the quicker that you can get rid of those zombies, the better. Uh, especially for what's coming up, because Mr. X can cause you a problem if you take too long. And for some reason, I'm heading upstairs. I remember doing this. I was like, oh, God damn it, you dumbass. Turn around. You need to use the jack. And this is where I started to get paranoid, because that one mistake, now I can hear Mr. X. He's up on the third floor. He's right above me. So I need to move very quickly here and hope that he doesn't actually come in here. Now, so we, set, we set these bookcases up earlier, so now we only have to move these once. And we've got our bridge. Okay, so we'll go ahead and get the grenade launcher ready. We're going to come straight around the corner. We're going to toss that one grenade we have. There's a zombie right there. Kill him. And then we're going to use this shell to kill him. You do not have to do this, to be clear. But I like to do it because I want to free up that inventory space. And I want to instantly remove these zombies as quickly as possible. Because there's a very good chance that Mr. X is right on your tail. And if you're sitting there constantly shooting at those zombies and using your ammunition to take them out... It's going to give Mr. X a hell of a lot more time to catch up to you. Like I said, you don't have to do it, but for me personally, that's the safest and... I wouldn't say the smartest way necessarily, but it's definitely the safest way of doing it. So we'll grab our large gear. This is what I'm talking about with level design, guys. And this is why I came in this room earlier and cleared these zombies out, because now I have free reign of this place. No problem. So we got what we need. Now we can head straight over to the clock tower, finish off that last little puzzle. It's barely even a puzzle, really. And, oh, for fuck's sake, of course you're here. Alright, that's fine. We can lead him straight back into this room, and it's very easy to get around him from here. Now, fortunately, with Claire's playthrough, Mr. X is not nearly as prevalent as he is in Leon's. Especially in Leon's B story. In Leon's B story, the only place you will not see him is the sewer. But he is in literally every other section of the game. Alright, we're in. So first things first, we'll go ahead and put our gear here. That'll lower the staircase for us. Pick the gear back up, and we'll head straight upstairs. Grab the small gear. Put the large gear in its place. And head downstairs. Put our small gear where it needs to go. Then we can grab that last box and we're out of here. That worked. Now, spoiler alert. Mr. X is still going to keep causing me problems here. So I take a quick look around, make sure he's nowhere near. All right, we're clear. We're good, right? No, no, you're not. <laughs> and that's exactly where I need to go. Great. So what I'm going to do is then I'm going to run straight back into the clock tower because he can't get in there. I'm a little iffy on that. Um, I kind of, in some ways, I wish that he would because it would make the game a little bit more challenging. But on the other hand, in circumstances like this, I'm like, thank fucking God he can't get in here. Now, I just decided, I was like, you know what, I'm just going to wait for him to go all the way down there and leave the area and just follow up behind him. 43 minutes, 8 seconds, not too bad. And you know, from a development perspective, I can certainly understand why they didn't allow Mr. X to go in there, because there's, it's nothing but one corridor, there's no way to get around him. So, if he walks in there, you're instantly trapped and you're not going to be able to get, and you're, he's going to hit you if you don't have a flash, but grenade or something to to stun him long enough for you to get around him it, and even if you do even if you do hit him with the uh the flash grenade he likes to just keep swinging blindly and yeah that hurts when he hits you 
Mr. X can definitely one hit kill you if he gets his hands on you and you don't have something, uh, you know, some kind of a sub weapon to get him off. You're dead. He will kill you. Now, as you can tell, I'm being very cautious here because I, I couldn't really hear exactly where he went. It didn't even, I didn't even hear him open the door, so I'm actually a little paranoid right now. I think he probably went out the balcony. Well, that's really the only place he could have gone. But at this point, I realized, I was like, okay, if he's in here and I start running, he's just going to know where I am, and then I'll at least have a good idea of where he is. But we are completely clear here. All right, so we made it back to the office safe and sound. So we'll go ahead and get our puzzle done, and then we're moving on to Sherry's segment. All right, hey, Sherry. Okay, so this uh, Sherry segment is extremely easy. It's probably the easiest part in the entire game. So we just got to figure out this puzzle real quick. I think that some of this might actually be randomized. It's always the same solution, but I think the placement of the blocks is randomized. I could be wrong on that, though. I'm not exactly the brightest peanut in the turd, so don't take my word for it. Dude, that's wrong on the left. I didn't even notice that I did that when I was playing this. The one on the left is completely wrong. I can understand why this took me longer than it normally does, because I completely goofed that. Yeah, there you go, dummy. There we go. Yeah, that took a bit longer than it normally takes me. I don't... Okay, so I don't think that it was necessarily randomized. I think it's just that I made that mistake and just didn't notice it, but you know, whatever, it's fine. I don't even care that much. What is this? There's really only one part of Sherry's segment that can be a little tricky, uh, but once, really once it kills you, once you get killed one time with this, you're never going to make the same mistake twice. So it's, it's very simple. Certainly not one of the points where my heart uh, was about to beat out of my chest. There, believe it or not, there were certain points as experiences I am with this game. There's always points that get to me when I'm doing this kind of run. Uh, because you know that just a single mistake is could potentially kill your entire run. And you'll lose all of this progress. That must be the door out of here. All right, so this part's easy enough. Just run. Just run away from him. There's only one place you're going to be able to go, so if you've played the game even once, you know exactly where you're supposed to go. So, Iron's patterns are always the same, they never change. He first goes down to the right, so you just avoid him here. 
And then he's going to move that crib out of the way, which it somehow managed to just magically appear there because it wasn't there when Sherry just came through here. And then he's going to turn around and come pretty much to where I'm standing right now. And that's where uh, things can get a little tricky if you haven't played it before. Obviously, if you're watching this, you've already played the game, and you should not ever... No, nobody's ever going to try to do this on their first time playing it. Bitch has gotta be here so here he comes. Hope you broke your balls, you prick. God, I hate this guy. So this is where the tricky part comes in. He's going to lean over here in a second. Looks over, and then as that flashlight moves, you need to move immediately to the right because he's going to look on the left. And that's really the hardest part of it. He's caught me there. He caught me there once, and I never made that mistake again. Now, you can actually start moving in on him a lot quicker than you may think. This is your life. Really, once he starts to uh, run, well, let's see where, I want to see what point I start moving there. Okay, so now at this point, I pretty much just start moving straight towards him because he's completely distracted and he's just going to head straight for the bathroom door. And you can actually time that quicker and get up a little bit further if you're trying to speed run it. So we'll grab our key and you guys know what happens from here. Good to see you again, Claire. We've got unfinished business. What you and there we go, we finally got our parking permit. Just you wait, asshole. I'm hoping nobody minds that I'm skipping the cutscenes. I mean, I, I've seen them so many times that there's no point in watching them, and I'm just trying to get through this, so. Alright, so we know what we gotta do here. Head straight back down to the parking garage, and then we're gonna get the hell out of here. But of course, Mr. Asshole is gonna ambush us again. Now, one thing actually went horribly wrong here, but fortunately, because I was not using the flashbangs, I was able to make it work. Like I said, you can afford to waste two of them, but no more than that. You're going to need two for the second boss fight guaranteed, and if you waste too many, you're never going to have enough, because there's only one in the sewer for you to find. Come on, you prick, where are you? Yeah, there he is. Now, here's a little trick that I do with him to slow him down. You can use a flashbang, but I wouldn't recommend it. So here's what we're gonna do. Get him right on the corner of the car, wait for him to swing and go. That slows him down quite a bit, gives you plenty of time to get up to the gate that you need to get to, to get out of here. Now this next part, is where things kind of went wrong because it was equal parts me goofing and equal parts the game's RNG. Pops, okay, yep. Yeah, flashbang. Okay, now here's the mistake that I made. When the, pretty much the second that that first zombie knocks down the gate, you need to pop the leg of the second zombie and that'll allow you to sprint past. But I missed with the first shot and the second one didn't stun him. So I was like, screw it, I just tossed the flashbang. Now, here's an, another interesting part. This is where all of the dogs are going to show up, and you have to try to get around them. Now, I've got two options here. Try to avoid all of them and risk taking damage, or use all of my handgun ammo and kill them. Now, here's the thing. When I get to the sewers, I'm never going to use handgun ammo again, so what do you think I'm going to do? I'm going to kill every single one of them. This is obviously the slower way to do it, but it is the safer way. It's definitely possible to just dodge all these dogs and get past them, but again, I'm going to wind up getting rid of this handgun ammo anyways, and I just do not want to take the risk. I've dodged past them several times in several playthroughs, but there's always been times where I've taken just one hit, sometimes I've even taken two. It's not worth the risk, just expend the ammo, get rid of them, and then you'll be fine. 
Now, this is obviously a lot harder with Claire's starting SLS pistol because it's not very accurate and it's only got five rounds in it. If I had Claire's second pistol, this would be a cakewalk, but we unfortunately don't have that. So it's always a good idea to go ahead and take out these zombie dogs before they even have a chance to get over the gate. And obviously you do not want to exit that gate until you've killed every single one of them. There's three of them out there in total. There's two down. The third one is right there in front of us. And it's a super zombie dog that's invincible. I'm guessing that I just need to get closer, so I went ahead and turned around and I grabbed the machine gun ammo back there. Like I said, we're still stocking up on special ammo right now. And one, two, three, four. Oh my gosh, six shots for one zombie dog? It usually takes four to five. That was, a, I guess, some bad rolls there with the RNG. All right, so those are cleared out. There's one more, and there's also going to be a zombie inside the bus. You got a hand grenade? Go ahead and grab that. Now, I did one time, I actually had one of the zombie dogs get inside the bus. That's literally only happened once, but move quickly here if you can. That took me way too long. Now I'm carefully checking around, and the zombie dog is just gone, even though there is one more. I think it must have jumped over the barricade and didn't come back. I'm guessing that's what happened. So I got very lucky there. Now, we've only got 13 rounds left, but again, that's totally fine because I'm going to wind up getting rid of every single one of those rounds here in a minute anyways. So before you go try to find Sherry, you actually want to head upstairs and go to the bathroom where Irons is trying to wash his face off after uh, Sherry hit him with the acid. because you got more machine gun ammo. And as you saw, I also equipped the hand grenade because I'm gonna wind up using that fairly soon. Actually, you know, come to think of it, I think I wind up re-equipping the flashbang. I do, and I actually instantly regretted it. It worked out okay, but I, I shouldn't have done that. And I'll show you what section I'm talking about when we get to it. I would recommend using a hand grenade for that section unless you have three flashbangs. Come on, Sherry, where are you, little girl? Where are you? Claire! There she is. Sherry? I'll be right there! Yep, there you are. It's Captain Cocksucker again. Alright, you just run. Go, go, go! I'll tell you one big complaint I do have about this remake is that I really think that they should have spent more time expanding on the characters and developing their relationships more. That's something that really bugs me about this game. You did a remake and you didn't expand on it really that much at all. Yeah, I guess that's being a bit nitpicky, but, you know, it's hard to find a flaw with this game, really. 56.27, not bad, so we're down in the sewers in under an hour. Again, like I said, you can definitely cut that time down, but this is pretty good. All right, we got our high-powered rounds for the SLS, and this is precisely why the 9mm rounds com become completely useless with this type of playthrough. Can you hear me? Now, of course, we can't use the SLS rounds, though, quite yet, because we need to get the reinforced frame for Claire's handgun first. So as we're going through this first bit of the sewers, add another one to the sewer count. You've got some white gunpowder right there. Go ahead and grab that. Yeah, and I equipped the, uh, the flashbangs. And uh, in hindsight, I wish I hadn't done this, and I realized almost immediately after I used it that I shouldn't have done that, but again, everything worked out fine. But I would honestly, like I said, unless you've got three flashbangs at this point, go ahead and use the hand grenade instead. Because you're about to run into a problem up here. So you come up the ladder, and the second you go through this door, there's three zombies. Now, you can dodge them, but it's very risky to do that. You cut straight through here. There's one incendiary round right here that you can grab. Turn around, toss the flashbang. There you go. The reason I really wanted to do that is because I want to get in here. SZF is the locker code, and you'll get machine gun rounds out of it. Hey, 
Hold on. Sherry, I'll be right there. All right, I just re-equipped the hand grenade, and this is where managing your inventory can become a challenge and becomes incredibly crucial because we are really going to not have any space to work with when we're down here in the sewer. So the first thing we're going to do is going to we're going to cut straight to the left and we're going to go ahead and grab the T-tool. And then we're going to turn back around and we're going to go to the safe and inside that safe is Claire's upgrade for her handgun. Combination for this is 2128. If you forget it, it's on the right side of the safe, just etched right into it. Go ahead and combine them. There we go. Now I'm going to go ahead and switch immediately over to the high powered rounds and get rid of the 9mm rounds. Do not save these, use them. Use them on the zombies, kill them all, get rid of them, get them out of the way. Three down here, one, two, and this third one is lying on the ground. We want to take him out now because he's going to ambush us later if we don't kill him. Open this up, and then we're going to head back here because there's another hand grenade, which we'll be needing those. So we got two hand grenades. And this is where you run into a problem. Our inventory, we already have too much in our inventory but I'll definitely show you how we can start cleaning that up. So you're gonna have one G-Adult that's gonna come out of the sewer on the right, that's fine. As long as you stick to the left, you can easily get past him. Get up here and use your T-Tool. The and there's some more high-powered rounds right here. Grab those and head straight up. There's gonna be four zombies up here to deal with. But with this handgun, we can easily take all of them out with four rounds now. There's one. He'll get up later if you don't kill him now. And you're going to want to grab that film. That's very important to get that film. Now we've got one here. Be very precise with these shots. Ooh, very nice shot. Take him out. Actually, no, I guess it's five zombies. I was wrong. Yeah, that zombie that I shot that was actually up on top of that pipe, he will just drop down. So you're going to have to deal with him one way or another. So I like to just snipe him when I have the chance. Now we're going to go ahead and pull Claire's good old-fashioned grenade launcher out because we're about to use it here. We're going to need two grenade launcher rounds and one grenade. G-Adult. Toss your grenade. And blast him. Let the fire do its job. Go ahead and wait for a second. Once the fire starts to wear off, hit him with the second one and that'll kill him. Alright, he's out. Now before we continue on, we're actually going to take a right here and head down this tunnel. And there is more high-powered rounds down here for you. Alright, now that we got those, we'll continue on. And there will be another T-bar slot for us coming up. Now there's two things we want to do down here. One, we want to grab the key. And there's also another T-bar slot that we're going to want to use our T-bar on. Not only does that uh, expend one of the uses for it, so we can get rid of it quicker, but that also will allow us to get back to the save room where the plugs are at. Well, I, not necessarily where the plugs are at, but where the plug slots are at. But we're not going to head through there. We're going to instantly turn right the fuck back around and head straight back the way we came.
All right, now that we're back on track, we can go ahead and use the uh, treatment facility key. We have two doors, use one here, and we're gonna be coming right back here in a second. And the second one is straight down here. There's nothing in this room that we need, but we have to get rid of this key. Use it up. There we go, now we can scrap it. So we'll head through here, and we are actually going to go uh, straight back up to the police department, which I'm not sure if speedrunners actually do this. I don't know, I don't really, I've only maybe watched one or maybe two Resident Evil speedruns, and that was when the game first came out. Speedrunners are absolutely crazy people. I uh, got a lot of respect for them for doing what they do, but it's it's not really for me. I do like challenging myself, you know, kind of like what we're doing here, but not to the extent of trying to beat this game in under an hour. So I did find some more high-powered high rounds right there. And as we come through here, you're going to want to cut a little bit to the left because you got a grenade. There we go. And straight back up, we're going to use the T-tool, and that'll get rid of the T-tool entirely. And then right after that, we're going to head straight to the dark room and process that film. Now that was two incendiary rounds. I just remembered that I picked those up. That actually causes a problem because I need to get rid of one of them. I think I wind up dropping it. I don't believe I use it. And like I said before, this is really the point where managing that inventory becomes critical. And really, it's not just about managing the inventory now. I've been managing the inventory to look like this since the very, very beginning of the game. Like I said, you have to plan this entire thing out from beginning to end. I'm intentionally going a bit overboard with my ammunition because you have several options here. You can go overboard and get a ton of stuff and use it. You can get a ton of stuff and get rid of it or not get it at all. And I'll show you why I decided to go ahead and go overboard and get a ton of stuff. Now we're going to go ahead and head straight back to the STARS office, and I think we all know why, because I want to get that machine gun. Now you have to process the film in order to unlock the secret hiding places. Now once we're in here, we're going to go ahead and use that gunpowder that we picked up in the sewer and combine it with the gunpowder in the STARS office to give us a little bit more of that delicious machine gun ammo. Grab our machine gun. And yeah, I can already tell you right now that this is definitely the point where I had to drop one of those rounds. So we're going to go ahead and collapse that because we're going to need to reuse the STARS badge once we start heading back down to the sewer. You come in here, here's the secret that we need. And yep, yeah, I guarantee you I'm going to drop it. Yep, there we go. So go ahead and pick that up. And this will give you the extended mag, which will beef the magazine up to 50 rounds. And now we're going to very quietly work our way out here. Let's not piss off the liquor, huh? Now you can probably see why I was collecting ammunition for the uh, machine gun so early on, because look at how much we have. 445 and then 50 in the clip, and we're actually going to head up to the third floor and go to the locker that we unlocked at the very beginning of the game, that was the DCM locker, and grab more machine gun ammo. I'm pretty, uh, no, I, I take that back. There is one more little bit of machine gun ammo that we're going to get, and then that's it. This is enough to finish the entire game with. Now we're going to go ahead and head straight back down to the sewers. So I'll see you guys when we get down there. Now on our way down, we're going to go ahead and use our STARS badge and open this case up that's down here and get ourselves the final upgrade for the machine gun, which is the silencer. Now, 
You don't necessarily need to do this. However, I like to do it uh, because it really helps stabilize the weapon and you'll be significantly more accurate with it. And this is uh, another way that you could probably optimize this this run and cut the time down is by skipping that entirely because not only is that using up a few seconds of your time but it's also going to take up an extra inventory slot but I've I'm pretty much programmed to do it like this so this is how I'm gonna do it now we want to grab the rook plug make absolutely sure you grab that rook plug the second you come out of that treatment facility door and then you want to head all the way back to where we use the t-tool twice in a row we killed this g-adult right down here so I know that we're clear and then we're going to go ahead and head down to the depths, or hell as I like to call it. Now this is the reason that I overstock on this part, because you've got a couple options. There's going to be three G adults that you're going to deal with down here. I'm fairly certain you have to kill one of them, and you can avoid two of them, but you're going to have to avoid them again on your way back. Or, you can spend a few extra seconds and just kill all three of them and not have to worry about it at all. So what do you think I'm going to do? I'm going to kill them. Get them out of the way. And we need to open up two inventory slots in order to grab the queen and the king plug that's up ahead. So I'm going to be running the machine gun and the grenades here in order to get rid of them as quickly as I can. And that'll free up our inventory so we'll be able to get everything that we need. Yeah, the machine gun is a very, very underrated weapon. It's incredibly good. So our second one's coming around here. Now he is at full strength. You gotta bust this open before you can even attempt to get to the guy. So we're gonna go ahead and toss a grenade at him right as he decides to spit some of those little things at us. And tear him up. He's out. Now I still have one grenade and quite a few machine gun rounds. There's the third. Put a few shots on him before he gets in the water. Toss the grenade first. And finish him off with the machine gun. There we go. Now we still actually have too many machine gun rounds. We have five more than we actually need, but it's all right. We can still expend those without having to drop them. And this is one thing I want to emphasize is that I don't like to drop things. I like to use them. And if you plan everything out correctly, you'll be able to use them. You'll be able to use them. You'll always be effective. And you'll never actually have to waste anything. So there's our queen plug. And we'll reinsert the queen plug here. Open this gate up. And you turn around, and this zombie's going to drop down, and we're going to have to deal with him regardless, so you might as well take care of him now. And that opens up two inventory slots. Look at that. Now you come up here, you grab your king plug, and you drop down, and then you go grab your queen plug. And now we can get the hell out of here. Queen goes here. And cut right through here. Drop the king plug in. And then just work your way back. Inventory is full, but we got everything we need. We're good. Now there's going to be a fourth G adult that's going to attempt to ambush us, but he's very easy to get around and you don't need to use any ammunition or anything to get past him. We know that we're clear in here because we killed all three of them, but we're actually going to take a slight detour. We're going to hang a right here. Oh, no, I guess I didn't do it on this playthrough. There's actually machine gun ammo on my right. I'm surprised I didn't get it. Okay, well, we'll drop down here. And immediately jump up here. There's your fourth G adult. Once he goes under, go in right behind him. You're good to go. I'm really surprised I didn't grab that ammo. I must have just forgotten about it while I was playing it. Now we're going to hang a right, and this will take us straight up to the save room and to our second boss fight. Now, I would say that this boss fight is probably the hardest one in the game because you really, really, really got to know what you're doing here. And this is precisely why I still have one flashbang on me. We're going to get a second flashbang once we get down to the boss arena, and we're going to be using both of them. So think about this, you absolutely need to have one flashbang before you do this.
Okay, so we're going to go ahead and put the queen plug here. And we'll pick up the bishop plug and replace that with the king. And then we'll come over here. The bishop goes here. We'll grab the knight from right here and we'll replace that with the rook. And put the knight in and that finishes it off. All right, Sherry. On my way. You know, there's a lot of tricks in order to get this boss. I would recommend if you're trying to do this to save it at this point and go ahead and keep retrying this until you get it, until you're confident. One, two, four is what we need to actually get everything unlocked, get the power on. And let's start our second boss fight. There he is. Now, come right over here where the garden hose is, right under the vents. And the second his claw comes down, pop him with a grenade. What that's going to do is it not only damages him, but it's also going to make him immediately head for the door. Now you have to time this well. Right there. Yep, right as his back starts to turn, that's when you want to go. Turn around and hit him one more time. Keep going. Once he gets around the corner, turn around, pop him again. Now this is where you want to, if you do not have your flashbang equipped right now, Make sure you do it, because you're going to need it. Get down here, hit the crane to start moving the Conax, and then immediately turn and toss your flash, because he's right around that corner. Grab the other flashbang that's down here, pop him again, and move over to the other side. Pull out that machine gun and tear him apart. Okay, now there's some more machine gun ammo for you right here. Ready that flashbang, and once he starts to get up, throw throw it, and then we'll get back on with it. Stun him. Pop him with another grenade. Pull your machine gun back out, rip him apart. Once you've dropped him, hit the crane. The idea here is to kill him with the crane with only one hit. The problem with using the crane twice is that it cuts off how much you can move. And you really, really, really want to avoid that because he's incredibly dangerous and a lot faster than you may think. But this method works every time. Okay, we're good to go, we got him. Now let's go ahead and head up, find Sherry, and then we can get the hell out of here and we're on to the lab, the last section of the game. And I apparently got confused there, fucking somehow. Ned said her lab's not far. Wait, that cable car. <sighs> Hold on, Sherry. You're gonna be fine. Almost there, Sherry. We're almost there. Oh, good. The cable car. Okay. I better check everything. There's no turning back. This tram is bound for nest. Do not exit until the final destination. Okay, we're finally at the lab. So, of course, first things first, we need to go ahead and drop Sherry off, let her get some rest, and then we're going to get to work. Just hold on, Sherry. It's okay. Now with this type of run, I would certainly say that the sewer and the lab are definitely the easiest parts. For me personally, I, I personally feel that the uh, police department is the hardest thing to get through. But again, the only reason why uh, the sewer and the lab are kind of easy for me is because I set myself up for success over the entire course of the police department. Enjoy your visit.
Whereas when you're, especially the first section of the police department, it's kind of hard to set yourself up for success at that point because, uh, well, you don't really have anything to work with. So there's some incendiary rounds. We're going to go ahead and grab those and head straight through here. The first thing we need to do is, of course, upgrade the bracelet. Hour and 18 minutes. Not too bad. Certainly could be better, but it's not bad. So as we come in here, there's going to be one zombie. Pop him. Now there's actually three zombies in here, but we only need to kill him. We'll grab the grenade right here. That zombie is busy munching down, so we don't need to worry about her. And there's one that's standing up right here. You got plenty of time. Head straight for the ladder. Head up. Now once you get through here, there's going to be a zombie on the other side of the door. And I always like to approach it very carefully because... Uh, this has backfired on me a couple times. Now, there's a knife in this room, and we'll be coming back for it later. We do need that knife. Got him. Admittedly, you really don't need the knife, but uh, I kind of like to use it, even though I completely screwed up the third boss fight. Still got through it without a problem, but uh, there was definitely more efficient ways of doing that boss fight. Now, one thing that you'll notice that I'm doing is that I'm hugging the right side. The reason why is that if you get too close to the left, you'll open the doors, and the zombies have a tendency to get through into these halls if you do that. Not necessarily a problem, but I don't want to have to use any ammunition on them because I have plans for every single one of these uh, high-powered SLS rounds. So we'll crack this open, and then we're heading straight for the east. Okay, now here's one of the reasons that I've been actually been saving up those incendiary rounds, and I was a bit sparing with them when I was dealing with G Stage 2, because we're about to start using them. I really, really do not like dealing with these IV zombies up ahead, and Claire's grenade launcher can dispatch them with just two shots. Now I take one shot with the machine gun to drop this one. Hit him with a grenade, that drops him. Now we'll grab the high-grade gunpowder here. Hit that one, immediately turn around. Second one for him, that'll kill him. And a second one for him, and they're both out. We still have four left. Now the code here is 3123. Second code is 2067. Opens up your hatch and your drug testing lab. Now we'll go ahead and grab this. I cannot remember what it's called. The dispersal cartridge, yeah, okay. Yep. Now here's an interesting trick. So move forward as far as you can, get close, immediately turn around, the second one's gonna drop down. Wait for them to bunch up, just wait. Pop them, there you go. Sets both of them on fire. There's one that goes down. Let the fire just do its job. Give it a second. There it goes. Drops him back. And guess what? We killed two with two instead of having to use four. Saved a lot of ammunition there. We got two birds stoned at once. Okay, now we'll go straight into the testing lab. And we're going to grab the high-grade gunpowder here. Uh, sorry, large gunpowder. And we're going to combine that with a high-grade to create acid rounds. We're going to need that for the third boss fight. Now the code here is red, green, blue, red, green, blue, red, green. So you just start with red and work your way to the left. Easy enough. Adjust amount of solution to match cartridge capacity. Okay, our dispersal cartridge is filled. So now that we're back in the greenhouse, we're gonna head straight down below. We're gonna take a right the second we get out of here. 
And we're going to need our SLS for this. Now there's three zombies that we need to kill here. Fortunately, none of them are up right now. But we also have some incendiary rounds right there. Here's your three zombies. One, two, and three. Kill all three of them. Now you're definitely going to want to bring out your grenade launcher for this. There's going to be a liquid that drops down from the ceiling. Pop and run. Straight through the door. You can, it is possible to get past that liquor without having to uh, use a grenade launcher round, but it's very risky because if he just decides to fling his tongue out at you, he's going to hit you. So just go ahead and kill, or not, well, you won't kill him with that shot, but you can at least stun him. Now we're going to go ahead and keep using the SLS to remove the zombies from our path. There's one more. And he's out. All right, there we go. We got the signal modulator. Now we're going to head all the way back to where the uh, the resting room was. That way we can expand our inventory a little bit more. Okay, now that we're going through here, even though I didn't open any of those doors on my way out, I still like to be careful. And I accidentally opened that one up, but it's okay. We're going to have to go in there anyways. That was the kitchen, and there shouldn't really be any zombies in there. So Muff is your first one. Get your power on, and there you go. Now we're going to go ahead and cut to the left here. We're going to grab the knife that's in this room, and then we're going to keep moving. Now you definitely want to save your hand grenades. Definitely save those as well. I will tell you right now, I completely botched the final boss fight. But you'll, you'll see what I mean when we get there, but I definitely botched it. And it certainly could have been done a hell of a lot better. And we're going to head straight back to the east area. All right, we're going to head straight back down because we need to get the power going down here in order to get into the lab to cool off the chemical. But there's something else we have to do here first. Now, of course, we have the problem of there being two liquors here, and I'm not exactly keen on using my ammo. But since it's a very large area and the liquors are fairly spread out, you can sneak around them. So as long as you're quiet but deliberate with your movements, you'll be fine. So our first one is hanging there on the left. Stick to the right. You'll be good. We're going to go straight for the power coupling, use the signal modulator, and we'll get everything powered up. All right, we've got power, but we're not quite heading to that lab yet the low temp testing facility, if I remember correctly. The next liquor should be right around the corner here. Yeah, there you are, you ugly fuck. Just stick to the left, you'll be fine. Now there's another knife in here we wanna grab. And there's more incendiary shells as well. There we go. All right, we're sitting on seven incendiary shells, I like it. Now we're going to head to the low temp lab, and you got to be fucking kidding me. Usually when you enter a room, it resets their position 
but it's not doing that. 127, or 127, one hour, 27 minutes. You know what, fuck it. <laughs> Fucking kill him. I could tell that that was the one that I hit earlier because he was already kind of blackened. Obviously, I hit him and instantly ducked into the room because the other looker absolutely heard that. But that should have reset the other looker's position. This son of a bitch is out of the way. Still have six incendiary around, so that's not bad. We can definitely work with six. Yeah, and he's over there on the left. We got plenty of room to get around him. And head to the cooling lab. I'm pretty sure I've called it three different things in the span of about one minute. The verdict is low temp cooling lab. Okay. Welcome back, Dr. Lee. You have five new messages. Ooh, damn. I packed my parka. You know, Claire, you probably should have thought about that when you were in Code Veronica. Well, this takes place before Code Veronica, but whatever. Okay, we finally got it cooled off. Now we can go ahead and kill Plant 43. That liquor is really pissed off about something. Now, of course, be very careful coming out here. It's a short walk to get to that door, but do not test a liquor. They are very fast. Now, there's going to be one of the IV zombies here. But you don't need to kill it, because we're not coming back here. You just need to stun it. So hit it one time, wait for it to go down, and then run past him. You're good. Now, of course, because Resident Evil is an asshole, there's going to be more of these Ivy Zombies that just show up because magic. But they'll be fairly easy to deal with if your inventory looks anything like mine. So we'll go ahead and put this in place and kill the plant. Head straight on through. Now, there's two right up ahead that we're going to need to deal with. They're both laying on the ground, which is good, because that makes them very, very, very easy to hit. Tag that one. There's another one here. Tag him. Now, neither one of them are going to be able to regenerate in time. So we can go ahead and grab our chip, combine it, and we can get the hell out of here. Now, when you're heading back through here, immediately cut to the left when you get through the door, because there is another one of those fuckers here. There he is, right there on the right. If you do not cut to the left, he's going to grab you. And you are going to be forced at that point to use one of your sub-weapons to get them off of you. Because if you don't, that is an instant kill. They will instantly fucking kill you. Now, you notice that I just loaded my acid rounds. Because we're definitely going to need those for this next boss fight coming up. Alright, so we're going to head straight over to the west area. And there's a couple items in the west area. Actually, three items in the west area we're going to need to grab. And then we're on to our next boss fight. First item, you got a grenade here. It gives you three grenades. And we'll go ahead and get the power going now with Oss. Yeah, it'd probably be better if you didn't fuck that up, dude. Alright, I just equipped the knife, so we're definitely going to be needing those. I say definitely, but you really don't need to do this, but it is the more efficient way, but I kind of screwed this one up. Now we'll head to the right first, because there's large gunpowder here and high-grade gunpowder right here. We'll combine those, and that gives us a total of 11 acid rounds. That is more than enough to go ahead and deal with this final boss. 
Well, not final boss, but third boss. Oh, thank God. The antiviral agent. Gotta get back to Sherry. Okay, now if you do not have any SLS high-powered rounds at this point, that's okay. Go ahead and just run nothing but the machine gun, but I've got four SLS rounds, so I'm going to go ahead and use those. And we'll start popping those eyes. And hit him with an acid round. The acid round is great for G Stage 3 because it stun locks him. Now once we pop that final eye on his back, just start knifing him. Just like G Stage 1, the higher the frame rate, the better. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and back off. Waiting for the eye. There's the eye. Ooh, very poor accuracy. Stun him. There we go. You've got more than enough of those acid rounds. Use them. Use them all. Go ahead and stun him. Get reloaded. There we go. One eye. Stun. There we go. I gotta reload everything, so I'm just gonna go ahead and back off. Hit him with another acid round. Get reloaded. There we go. And this is where I messed up. My acid rounds did more damage than I expected. What you should be able to do is just get up to him and knife him much, much, much more than this. So I really screwed that up. It's alright though. We're pretty much nothing but long range at this point, but we have plenty of acid rounds, and we've got plenty of machine gun rounds. So I'm going to stun him, run past him, stun him again, and these acid rounds do a fairly substantial amount of damage as well. I didn't have my machine gun reloaded, so I'm going to go ahead and stun him again, and start tearing him up. Oh boy, oh, ooh, that was close. Stun him and run. You want to try to keep him as far away from you as humanly possible. There we go, he's out. Oh, there's nothing down here that we really need, so let's go ahead and head back to Sherry. Now, like I said before, I really, really botched up this last fight. Horribly botched it up, and you guys are going to see what I'm talking about here in a minute. If you use the grenades properly, then this fight is easy. Very easy. But I did not use the grenades properly, so what do you think happens? Now, Claire's and Leon's segments here at the end are dramatically different. Claire's is arguably harder. Um, as long as you have the right ammunition, then it's very easy. With Leon, you just have to dodge Mr. X here at the end, pretty much. But with Claire, you're going to have to deal with two Ivy Zombies. But guess what? We have plenty of incendiary shells to deal with them. You know, we've got three, and we really only need two. So this is going to be uh, pretty much a cakewalk. All right, we don't need anything here, so we're just going to barrel on forwards. We'll enjoy the very, very awesome music that pops up here at the end. I really love a lot of the uh, 
new music that was added to Resident Evil 2. One of my complaints, though, is that they didn't use the original soundtrack nearly enough. It's barely in the game. But the new soundtrack is actually pretty damn good. So let's go ahead and chill out and listen to it. Sherry, run! As you can see, you can very easily just run past these guys. With Leon's campaign, you can't really do that, but with Claire's, you certainly can. Now, while Sherry's trying to do that, I went ahead and re-equipped my grenades. And there's going to be two Ivy Zombies that drop down. All it's going to take is one round to put them down. You don't need to kill them, you just need to drop them long enough for Sherry to get that door unlocked. There's the second one out. There he is. There we go. And now we just got to wait on Sherry. Took you long enough, Sherry. I know you got little legs, but come on, you can move faster than that. Well, there's this poor zombie here that has basically no health because he's on fire, so just drop him with a few rounds from the machine gun and you're good. Sherry, you hanging in there? I'm right behind you. Had a girl. I think we're almost out of here. It's worth a try. Now the first thing we want to do is head straight into the train car and grab the power supply that we need. And then we can head into the main room and go ahead and put it in where we need to. Claire gets a chain gun because reasons. Nothing quite like a 20 year old college student wielding a chain gun. Okay, this is where I completely fuck this up. And if you're experienced with this kind of thing, you'll completely understand what I'm talking about. Of course, pretty standard, just tear them up with a chain gun as much as you can, but it's really the grenades that you gotta get right, and I completely screwed up every single grenade toss in this. I've got three, so I'm just gonna toss one here. And I tossed it too early, so he's gonna climb up. What you wanna try to do is hit him right as he's climbing up because it instantly will drop him down. Because this can be a big problem. Dodging his jumps can be a little tricky. I dodged that one. But this is where things go really wrong because turn him up and yep, just like that. Now I'm in the danger state. I cannot take a single hit now. This is why this is not a no damage run aside from that liquor fucking me up. And there is literally no excuse for that. That was not the game screwing me over, that was me being a dumbass. And the problem with being in the danger state is that you're going to move quite a bit slower. And yeah, that was way too late to throw that grenade, so that did absolutely nothing. So at this point, I was extremely paranoid and just watching every little move that he made. Alright, he hooked right over the train car and right back down. It's really just about keeping your distance at this point. And he's going for another charge. Cut to the right, there we go. Come on, throw the grenade. No? Okay. I thought he was going to go right up the wall. He posed. I'm glad I didn't throw it in the actual game, though. He's getting pretty weak, though. Yeah, see, I thought he was going up the wall right there. I mean, the grenades are still doing quite a bit of damage to him, but... Ooh, barely dodged that one. Yep. Should have saved that first grenade. This is what I'm talking about with throwing those grenades, guys. If you're not precise with them and you're not doing a good job with your timing, then things can go very wrong. It's alright, though. I think we got him at this point. 
Yep, that's what we were looking for. That's going to split him in half, and now he's going to move a hell of a lot slower because he's lost his legs. Now just have fun. And he's out. That's it. Let's go ahead and skip through these cutscenes. Let's see what the end result is. Well, there's a good chunk of achievements, but the three I'm looking for is... Come on, where are they? Frugalist, Minimalist, and a Small Carbon Footprint. Those are the ones we were looking for. There we go, ladies and gentlemen. One hour, 42 minutes, 32 seconds with an S-plus rank with no item box, no heals, any of that good stuff. This was one hell of a challenge. I certainly wouldn't recommend doing it until you're very experienced with Resident Evil 2. And even then, it's kind of miserable to get to the point to where you can do this. But I hope that everybody enjoyed it. Uh, let me know what you think. And as always, good luck out there. And I, I hope other people are able to do this.